Hi folks, it's Jen with OpenSource.com bringing you the top five articles from this week, September 5th. As always, you can find the articles in the description below the video and also on OpenSource.com every Sunday. First up, we have trying out WordPress 4.0 on OpenStack. Jason Baker shares with us his experience of getting the new WordPress 4.0 up and running on an OpenStack instance. WordPress 4.0, called Benny, was officially released yesterday, but it was a few days ago that Jason used the TriStack site to test out the release candidate version. In this step-by-step, -step, see how Jason launches a virtual machine, connects his OpenStack instance to the outside world, and creates a WordPress database. At number four, we have the next open source frontier is the farm. Michael Tiemann brings us a story about the plight of what big agriculture is doing to farmlands and to our food. He asks, what can open source do about it? Tiemann first explains that industrial agriculture evolved around the assumption that total uniformity was the key to efficiency. But what if large-scale processes could tolerate medium-scale diversity, restoring the benefits of ecological diversity to improve farm health? One open source answer that has come about so far is FarmBot, a universal agricultural tool based on 3D printing technologies that can make crops economically feasible that were not feasible before by automating tasks that are too labor intensive for humans to do. But on a small scale, allowing for diversity where large scale farming cannot. At number three, we have top four open source invoicing tools for freelancers and small businesses. Scott Nesbitt reviews these four tools, Simple Invoices, Invoice Ninja, CWAP for SIW app, and Open Source Billing. Scott also gives readers tips on what to look for in an invoicing tool. At number two, we have Can This Free Software Company Secure the Future of Linux for the City of Munich? George Grieve, founder and CEO of Colab Systems, addresses the concerns of City of Munich officials over a Linux distribution government workers have been using called Linux. Joy, George points out that Linux is not to blame for their problems with the calendar and email systems, and that going back to Windows is an unnecessary step. George tells us, and we're hoping the City of Munich is listening, that the newest release of Cola 3.3 alleviates these issues and is the fix everyone is looking for. Finally, at number one, we have bringing new security features to Docker. Dan Walsh has been working on container technology for several years and runs the Red Hat Enterprise Linux Docker enablement team. He also works closely with SE Linux and frequently writes on topics of security for opensource.com. In this second part of a series on Docker and security, Dan addresses the misconception that containers contain and walks readers through what security measures should be taken to protect the host from the processes within the container and also to protect containers from each other. That's it for the top five this week, everyone. Thanks so much. See you next time.